Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at the largest city and metro area of Vermont, which is Burlington. It is also one of the most progressive cities in the USA, having one of the highest proportion of LGBTQ people of all cities. It is located closer to Montreal, Canada's second largest city, than any larger American city. And it is also the first city in the US to run entirely on renewable energy since 2015. A great feature of Burlington is that there are actually no highways cutting through the dense neighborhoods of the city. They are all kind of further away from the inhabited neighborhoods. This is in harsh contrast with the city we viewed a few episodes from now, uh, which was uh, Portland. Uh, this city was kind of overwhelmed if you can um, remember, by uh, highways and interchanges inside the actual city center. So this is pretty cool for Burlington. I also know that they have uh, a um, pedestrian street inside the old town, so that's quite unique for an American city. This is completely full of people, I've never seen anything like this, like even in Portland. Not so many people. I guess it's kind of um, helped by the fact that uh, the view is from July 2019. But still, like this is very impressive. Because it's not like a beach resort town or anything like this. It's probably mostly people from the city like going the inside of town and stuff like this. So this is very good. Honestly, I'm... Not even began to see much. I'm I'm al already impressed by this place. So apparently I can't look like from inside. But I I don't really need like we can just look at a uh, couple of side streets. Uh, but it's damn it's very lively here. I'm very surprised. It looks pretty much like it could have been in a European city. It would have been exactly the same probably. Even in summertime. Wow, and they have so many restaurants. Even here, like, much further away from the actual very center of it. Still many people. Okay, I don't know where I am now, but... Okay, a little park and some houses. Don't know why uh, Google Maps is choosing to take those like super long steps, whatever. Yeah, it's very dense housing and nice looking wooden houses with some brick housing. Like of course in, in larger cities you are gonna ha have some brick houses. But yeah, the houses look nice but they are not as large and magnificent as the mansions we saw a lot of in uh, in Montpellier. Yeah, we got some apartment housing as well. Pretty diverse. Let's take a look at the end of the actual pedestrian. Yeah, this is definitely a 10 out of 10 urban planning. Not really able to see what is gonna change my mind. Like, I'm not seeing any bicycle path, but <laughs> I don't really care. Like, we see many bike rides and actual people riding a bike. Like, that's the most important part of it. Because often you see American cities choosing to make bike paths, but actually no one is using them. So, most important is to have the uh, good, like, urban layouts that allows people to, uh, to bike. And uh, feel secure about it. That's the most important part, honestly. Nice little park, well maintained. They got many bike racks, like I'm, I'm impressed for little American city. I rarely see those, to be honest, in USA. Let's take a look at maybe uh, around here, close to the lake. Some higher density housing, I believe. No, this is a um, hotel, I think more. Yeah, yeah, so the, the sign here, that's why. Yeah, is this this a hotel? I'm wondering, the building. 
like a bit further away down. Why can't I see the building I saw just before? Okay, so I thought it was far away, but okay. Okay, so it's nothing, nothing special apparently in this building. I was also wondering what we had inside this huge complex. But yeah, I was wondering what was inside this huge building and it seems completely empty. Maybe with a few uh, shops, but yeah, it's uh, it seems like a mall, but very uh, empty, unfortunately. But it it goes to show like how when people have the choice, they prefer the obvious best, which is uh, outside commercial streets, nice streetscape. They prefer it by far uh, compared to uh, to a indoor mall. Not surprising at all. Yeah, I think we got a small station going on. By the way, in terms of public transit, we have around 6% of Burlington's population who use uh, public transit daily to get around, which is uh, twice as much as in Portland. The city also has an amazing 27% of its population commuting either by walking or biking. So this is definitely one of the best numbers we can find in any um, mid to small sized American city. You got some nice park environment down here and small, uh, small shops again near the lakefront. Very nice little city and good to be outside in this city. It's honestly uh, looking very much like a European city, little city. By the way, in terms of architecture, I think I'm giving it an 8. Like, I gave 10 for Portland because the architecture was absolutely wonderful there. I think it's still interesting here, like the neighborhoods have good character with uh, mostly build buildings made of wood, some made of brick, and the city center is interesting to walk in, but that's not really an architectural factor. Like, inside the the city center there isn't much like super interesting architecture like beautiful mansions or whatever beautiful old commercial buildings like there isn't much of it but there are many old commercial buildings though but we they don't have some so much super interesting architecture Okay, so here we had we have what I was looking for, like a kind of um, sport, sporty type of park, some tennis uh, fields, basketball field, and baseball fields. Very good to have inside the neighborhood. Very important. And uh, I wonder if this is also a park. Wow. Okay, there are many parks around here. I believe this is a wealthy area. Looks like it. Yeah quite a wealthy area but the thing is here in Burlington I believe all the wealth like 90% of the wealthy people here are locals because I don't see like people coming from far away owning a home in this area so the wealth here is mostly local I believe I'm maybe wrong but that's my take on it so this is already pretty good that uh, there are actually locals who are doing pretty well it's always important like to have people uh, uh, earning a solid amount of money because they are able to draw uh, new types of services inside the city and new types of uh, overall demand and which drives the economy of the area so it's very important to have people like this and wow this must be a nice spot to have a house here on this peninsula here they have a large marina. I was looking if they had some beaches actually in the lake. In the lakefront, I didn't. Yeah, here, but it doesn't. No, it's not actual beaches. Okay, here we have some. Okay, 
here we also have an ice park and we have uh, multiple parks actually looks like it yeah this is definitely also a wealthy area they are very good at uh, keeping many green areas in in Burlington I'm very impressed some paths inside the park this is very cool very nice for a neighborhood to have that's the thing, either American cities have zero parks, literally, like in most of the west and the south, often it's very rare to find uh, sizable parks, or they have an absolute crazy amount of parks, like it's very interesting, the difference. So we got a couple of other towns inside the metropolitan area, I don't think I'm gonna look at all of them. We also got a sizable rich community here. Just south of the city, yeah it seems like some of the very rich people of the area I owning a uh, mansion here. Of course because we are close to a golf course. Okay, so here there's a bridge. Is it car bridge? Car bridge or pedestrian bridge, maybe? What's this? No, it's not. Okay, so it's some kind of pier for people to walk. Uh, I guess it's not the the former, like the the use of it at first, but that's pretty cool. So I'm, <laughs> I'm doing a whole theme on um, on uh, pedestrian paths here, but I think it's very important and I, I don't think like it's um, common in smaller American cities, even larger ones, to have uh, large uh, natural areas and green areas like this with pedestrian paths and like nicely made public to everyone. So that's why I'm making a whole... Uh, theme out of it. Okay, so here we have a, a newer area. I'm interested by the fact that they have a park in this kind of retail area, I believe. Okay, they also tried to make a pedestrian street here, but not nearly as successful as in Burlington, of course. Yeah, that's the thing, small pedestrian uh, Streets like this in the uh, in mall areas, commercial areas like outside of the city are not doing so well because people are coming by car. Here we have some newer buildings also, newer residential area. Okay, with some row houses. This is pretty good with nice old architecture. It doesn't look like we have much to see here. I'm still gonna look at it, but this is a small, uh, small town in the suburbs. They made a new kind of a commercial and residential center. They have a small station though. It's cool. Maybe they have some. Kind of, kind of suburban trains. Whoa, that would be, honestly, that would be completely insane for a little American town to have. But I don't know. Maybe even if they just have some regular uh, train between like the suburb and the actual city of Burlington, that would already be awesome. To be honest. Yeah, they also have uh, happen to have an international air airport here in Burlington, which is of course because the city is far from far from yeah, anything else basically. So they need to have uh, an international airport since uh, traveling by train is so uh, bad in the U.S. <laughs> 